Good morning, friends. It's Bob bringing you another reflection on this idea of resetting our lives through worship and praise and thanksgiving. And uh, today, I last uh, yesterday, I talked to you about about how uh, praise actually sort of recenters us in our orbit around God, rather than trying to make everything around you know us. And if you're a parent, you you know that there's. There's just times when I think practically every parent has said, you think the world revolves around you. The reality is that we know that it doesn't revolve around us. But with that in mind, we want to put our lives back into the orbit of Jesus. And we want to make him the absolute center. And Thanksgiving is one of the ways that we do that. I don't mean eating turkey and dressing and all of the, the fixins or anything like that. I'm talking about giving thanks. And so in Psalm 9, it talks about, I will thank the Lord with all my heart. I will give thanks with all my heart. I will give thanks with all my heart. Now, what's interesting about that is that, that it says it's a choice, that thanksgiving is to give a choice. And we talked about yesterday how praise is on the whole. It, we praise God for who he is. We thank God for what he's done. And we are left with so many things that we, if, that we can see that, that God has done that we can actually thank him for. So there are all kinds of things. You know, he says, I, I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart. I will declare all his wonders. I will rejoice and boast about you. I will sing about your name most high. This is David, and he is, uh, he's praising God. He is, he's praising and thanking God. Now, you've heard me talk about thanks quite a bit because I think that thanks has been so powerful in my life and I see it powerfully working in so many people's lives. Thanksgiving and giving thanks, it actually causes us to take our focus off of what's going on inside of us and put it located in some other direction. And that is actually a helpful thing for human beings to do. That when human beings do that and they locate their focus into the things that God has done, who God is and the things that God has done, the things that he's accomplished, the things that he gives, then we are actually, our perspective, once again, it changes. We reset our lives, reset worship, reset praise, reset thanks. And so we are resetting our perspective by thanking God. I like the way that James puts this, where he says, you know, don't be deceived. Every good and perfect gift comes from on high, comes from the Lord of the Father of lights. That is to say that we can somehow kind of get deceived in and slide into a, a kind of deception like, well, it's all about us or it's all about what we do or it's all about, you know, what we can accomplish. And, and James is saying, take your focus off of yourself, that all these good things that are coming to you, even the things that are coming from your own hands, those are being gifted to you by God. And so that shifts our focus to start thanking God for what he's done. Now, we can thank God and we need to thank God routinely for the work that Jesus did by coming to rescue us in person. But we, and then we thank you, thank God for the work that Jesus, the suffering that Jesus uh, encountered in order to rescue us. And the, the very high price, we thank God for what God has done in that. That we thank God that now that, that we are, we have owned him as Savior, that we've been adopted into a family that I belong. And I thank God that I have a family that I belong in. I'm not talking about the branch family. I'm talking about the kingdom family, the king's family that I'm a part of with you. And so I thank God for that. I thank God that he actually called me and that he called my name and called me to follow him. And that's a giant gift. I thank God that I have a, a heavenly inheritance, that I have this, the, the, the end, when I take my last breath, that's not the end of me, that actually what happens on the other side of my last breath is glory. And that's a gift. And I thank him for that. Again, Thank and, and then as you get your thanker going and you start to, to get more particular, you start seeing God do things all over the place all the time. And something happens, you get a report, you get a text from somebody about something that God did. You're, thank you, Lord. You know, and uh, thank you, Lord, for this. And I, I, you know, oh, we prayed for this person and this and thus or so happened. Or, you know, hey, I got this promotion that I was looking for. Thank you, Lord. And I, uh, I met this guy or I met this gal and gosh, it just seems like that they're the one. Thank you, Lord. I, Lord, uh, that my, my, my child, you know, got, got a great grade, you know, on this test. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for, for working with them in this, 
in, in the test, in the uh, studying and all of that stuff, that we get our thinker going and it just enriches everything. That we reset worship, that we choose to worship God, that we choose to praise God, that we choose to thank God. And when we do that, it's hitting the hard reset button on our lives. It was hitting the button, the button, as some of the kids say. And the Lord is saying, would you come do this? This is the best thing for you. This is a healthy diet that you and I need to take regular routine time, not just wait until Sunday morning, but that this is a habit. This is something that we do in our individual time with God. This is something that we do when we're together in small groups. This is something that we do together when we're, get to, when we're together in large groups. This is something that we do throughout our day. This is a practice. This is the choice of giving thanks. God is inviting you and I into this today. Let's take him up on that. I love you. I'm with you. Thanks for joining me today. God bless you.